indeed moved to Kofodis this year remember he's had some very good early season and will this man finally make a breakthrough Alessandro Balan so for them two times winners what will be the game plan with quick step they've got three men capable of doing something Bettini van Peteren and uh, Tom Bonin which card will they play or will they just throw it in and see how long they stay there it was very obvious in Harrelbeck that uh, the team was maybe not quite as, as strong as he could have done with Tom Bonin. But it's another day, another race. Uh, the Tour of Flanders running out at about quarter to ten this morning from Bruges. to see this race. Well, this was a crash early on in the race, and uh, Bonin was uh, involved in this. Well, this might have been an earlier one, but there was a crash earlier in the race. Uh, Christophe Riblon uh, going down here. And that's Heinrich Hausler, the uh, Australo-German. 
claims uh, his uh, German nationality has a very much an Australian attitude and very much uh, is an Australian at heart, I think, lives that sort of lifestyle. Hausler, one of my outside bets for uh, something very interesting, if he can get back on, because he's super, super strong and he's a very talented rider. 148 at the back there, Enrico Franzoi, a rider who I much admire, and we've seen him a lot in the Giro, doing something pretty good, and he's also a first-class cyclocross rider, so... Uh, in fact, it would have suited him if the weather was a little bit worse here. Yeah, he's a really good bike handler. Everett uh, Verbicht is the Chocolata Jack rider in this group. And uh, Laurent Mangel from the AG2R squad. Well, the weather absolutely superb today. Very much in opposition to the traditional images that we've had. In de Parijs-Roubaix is dat dan Carrefour de l'Arbre, mm. waar het moet gebeuren ten laatste, maar hier. Dit is nog zo'n droompunt. De Kassei van Kerkgaten, grondgebied Mater. Een strook van drie kilometer, dat moet de langste strook van allemaal zijn. Het venijnige aan die strook is dat die gestaag bergop loopt. Hè. En als je alles opendraait onderaan, dan ben je afgepijgerd tenminste als je niet getreed bent. Als je helemaal aan de hoek komt, jij wil wat zeggen. Ja, wat hebben ze gedaan? Ze hebben hier op het voetpad telkens weer na daar afsluitingen gezet om de renners daarvan af te houden. Omdat het anders voor het publiek echt wel een hele linker soep wordt. En nu hebben ze de renners verplicht om op de kassei te blijven. De renners die anders, vooral de mannen die hier wonen en het parcours goed kennen, telkens weer opnieuw dat voetpad op gaan met Galschop. tomorrow he's going to be sore for the rest of the day as well if he's going to battle on that's a bit of a shame because i know that uh, you were quoted in a magazine recently as uh, as i've said uh, before to you and he's a pretty talented rider is uh, heinrich hausler yes well he's an up-and-coming rider we've seen him last year you know he put in some good performances and uh, he's a rider you know that uh, it looks promising he can you know get through the climbs he can uh, get over pretty well and the classics of course would be a you know a style of race that should suit him and i think you know he's uh, definitely a an up-and-coming one over the next couple of years and uh, you know that is the problem when you as we said as you go down in a crash you can do some damage to material and you know when you go on to the uh, cobbles that's where certainly you will, you, you will get caught out later and that seems to be the case because they're on a, on a cobble section there when we see houselers uh, uh, here the, the fork problem let's have a look uh, is this going to show us anything no it's not it's just going to show them on this uh, long long cobbled section this is the kirk gate i think they're on at the moment between the two climbs of uh, Molenberg and Wolfenberg. Long section this, three kilometers of cobbles. And uh, you rode this yesterday, Sean. Sadly, I, I didn't get the chance to. I was sick as a dog yesterday. Thanks to my young son, Leon, for giving me that stomach bug. But uh, you rode this yesterday. And it, it does take it out of you, these long, long sections of cobbles, not just on the hills. You've just got to hammer over these as well. Yes, well, it certainly uh, takes it out of you, and uh, the advantage is when you're riding, you know, in a, in a leisure cycle, when you can, you know, go over the cobbles and you can start dream and you're in, the, in a race, but then you can rest <laughs> afterwards, where it's not the case uh, here, certainly, as we get further on into the race, because they will be attacking these sector of cobbles, you know, really at 100%, and it just goes on from there, and as you go into the race, as I said er er later, uh, earlier on, um, 
when you go to the, you know, the outer quarter on the Padersberg and later on they come very quickly, they come hot and heavy and you know you, you get no time to recover and that's where the strong men really come out and you know show their strengths and we will see you know the group uh, splitting quite a bit and lots of riders losing contact as we go over you know the 200 k is 180 kilo mark in the race. Well a lot of riders already beginning to suffer that's uh, just going past there Eric uh, Bartow. Right at the back was Nico Urquhart. You saw the Belgian national champion. He's a bit of a gorilla on a bike and has had some very good results. Uh, strong, strong man sprinter. And he's had a problem actually in the three days of the pan. He crashed and uh, he actually had uh, uh, very sore ribs over the past couple of days. He did finish the three days of the pan. Well, I, I don't know if he did the time by the final day, but he was in there on the morning stage of the last day and he was in the break. But he's still suffering a lot. And I was reading yesterday in the paper here that. with live pictures here on the 91st uh, Ron van Vlaanderen the Tour of Flanders the Peloton are on the Wolvenberg it's tarmacked but it's pretty steep 17% it's maximum on the way up uh, people overlook this climb but it's a short sharp one and if you're not at the front and the power goes down and you've been strung off at the back of the Kirkgate which is what we were looking at uh, before three, three kilometres of cobblestones uh, difficult to uh, charge back on, especially if you're not feeling... Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, I suppose he's a rather... Oh. Well see another crash here. Oh dear, uh, that looks like Ancelara. He's been involved in that uh, on the deck. Mickelson. And uh, yeah, Lars, is that Lars Mickelson? He's yes. going to be retiring after Paris Roubaix is Lars Mickelson. And I wonder what went on there. He's got two or three. Matty Breschel, I think, is, is that Matty Breschel who's uh, in there as well? Close to guard. Close to guard. Yes. Quite a few from the CSC, actually. Oh dear. Uh, all shepherding uh, Cancellara and all going down, unfortunately. And uh, Fabian Cancellara. Back up on his bike again, and it'd be nice to see a bit, a shot a bit further down to see if there's any cuts and bruises and scrapes. And I think he has Marcus Lundqvist with him on his uh, shoulder to pace him back up. We'll have a see in a minute. They're there at the front, uh, the Case de Pan rider. Uh, Laurent Mangel, the AG2R rider. Then Martin Chilingi is the guy from Skill Shimano. Alexander Kusinski of Liquid Gas, number 157 in there. Ervid Verbiest on the far right hand side of his shot, 203, is the uh, rider from Chocolat de Jacques, and they're desperate to do something. They always send people out in these uh, sorts of races, as do the team at the back. David Boucher from uh, Lambeau Credit. They are both uh, Belgian teams. Uh, Chocolat de Jacques, really regional team. Oh dear, more crashes. Milram on the floor. Also, oh, two Milram riders. Oh, one Sonia Deval rider. It's amazing today the number of crashes. This is incredible. Somebody else involved in this. One to 22 is a Fabian Wegman. You can see there. Oh dear, oh dear, another nasty bit of a, a, a wrist injury, an arm injury. That looks like uh, Manuel Mori this morning. I had a word with Manuel Mori. 
uh, in his uh, less uh, my faltering Italian in his uh, faltering English and he was very happy I am very happy as he says he won't be very happy now because that looks be very painful indeed Eric Zabel is the I think on the floor I'm not sure but let's have a look let's have a quick look that looks like Eric to me it is it's Eric Zabel Eric Zabel involved in the crash and I think it's just leave me alone leave me alone leave me alone he says oh disaster for Eric and one of the guys he th we thought could be up there because he has the tactical nous is no longer in this race oh that is terrible news for Eric oh dear uh, the liquid gas uh, rider Didalto Manuel Didalto not a man we see very often in races 224 there is uh, well, Stefan van Dijk he's uh, another good sprinter strong sprinter he's moved teams a few times he was with Kolstrup uh, Palmans for a while uh, did have a, a ban for a while but uh, now back with Wiesenhoff well that's a disaster for Eric Schum. yes it certainly is and the amazing thing as you said David uh, on the left hand side uh, the whole uh, line of riders seem to be the right hand side of the road and for some reason you know everybody ended up on the left side but you know sometimes when uh, something go wrong if a rider start to fall and he goes from right to left everybody tried to go around him and uh, that could have been the case there where everybody just veered to the left and tried to avoid a crash if there's a rider sliding across the road in front of you and you know there might be three or four riders who would follow that line uh, of the rider who would be trying to avoid a crash and everybody just comes down but it's amazing like that the uh, you know the, it was totally over to the left hand side of the road but once again you know the outer quarter mount as i said you know we see up front uh, uh, the uh, the riders from t-mobile up We see Bone in there in the background, and you know the experience is coming to the fore now. Just uh, at the right time, they're up there in the in the in the, t in the front line, and that, if they start doing that, for example, in the three days of the pan, if they start really showing the really top shape, well then uh, there's a lot of pressure come on them. So you know they prepare quietly, and as we said earlier, David, the riders are the ones who know at what stage they are and their fitness levels. This is the Paterberg. And now a real hammer going down at the front, uh, all being strung out straight away. Interesting to see Baden Cook still up the front there, Sean. He was looking very, very up for it today. Uh, had a, a, a long talk with Matthew Wilson this morning. Uh, and said hello to Jacques Hanegraaff, the director sportif of uh, Unibet. They are very pleased to be here. Let's not forget they're being used, and let's not beat around the bush. They are being a political football at the moment, Unibet. Uh, now, some people will disagree with that, but that is the fact. I'm sorry, it's the way it is. Unibet are being battered backwards and forwards for a company like Unibet to put 30 million euros into the sport uh, and uh, have uh, be one of the first teams to sign up will be their first team to sign up for the DNA profiling for their riders all the sort of things that the sport wants to see and then to be battered around backwards and forwards is not a good thing and uh, they should sort it all out simple as that but it's nice to see them here and I said to, to Matt now you're not getting much racing are you I said jocularly and he said no mate none at all and uh, and they are the morale is sort of keeping a little bit up but uh, what can they do it's out of their hands they say so they haven't got that much racing under their belts so so good to see Baden Cook up towards the front. Had a very good early start of the season with Jimmy Casper and Baden. But um, really, it's just terribly, terribly difficult for them. They don't have any problem racing in Unibet jerseys here, of course, because they are a Belgian team. And it doesn't matter to them at the moment. That's uh, Nikolai Trusev, I think, uh, on the back there. Trusev, who we saw. Uh, it is Nikolai Trusev, who we'd seen a lot of in the World Track Championships and uh, he was uh, doing pretty well enjoying himself I think as a lot of people did I think actually that was was that Kim Kirken off the back as well just looked a little bit like there was style of riding and that'll be a bit of a, an upset for T-Mobile. They said Kim Kirken is in, uh, speaking to Rolf Aldag this morning, he's in very, very good shape, is Kirken, and they were looking at him to be one of the main protagonists in this race. 
And if that's Kirken off the back, that's one of their major cards down the Swanee. Two T-Mobile riders at the front. It's really beginning to split this group up. Everybody fighting to stay on the wheel. Not too big a splits at the moment. <laughs> It's a huge effort and uh, it's something you don't want to have to deal with this stage of the race. Well, Marcus Burkhardt, the T-Mobile rider, uh, sharing the work on the front and dragging people along, 74. Sigmunds, yeah, get Sigmunds. Positioning is going to be important, and of course, up front here with a small number of riders, uh, it's uh, you know it's not too difficult. But with you know the bunch here, as we see. Quite close to the front because the lead into her as well. Uh, it's very narrow rows. Hey, come on! Hey! 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 So the mood time, Nathan. Hey, come on! Hey, come on! And he does. He looks to be you know, comfortable enough at this moment, and uh, we can see there Bettini also, uh, you know, quite to the fore, and uh, quite a few of the quick steps we can see, you know, two, three, four, five quick steps up there, certainly in the top 20 riders, and uh, it's a, you know, it's the, it's a pretty uh, good place to be because not to have to, you know, put too many men riding on the front daily, uh, you don't want to do that with your team because you definitely pay the price later. So. Uh, we see there was one man from Quickstep led into the uh, the Patersburg there, and then he just disappears a bit. But uh, you know it doesn't mean that he's having problems following. I think he could be saying, well, you know we're in a good position now. Let some of the other ones do some of the pulling on the front. A number of riders trying to move up their positions, get around the outside of uh, some of the other riders as they come up towards the uh, summit of the Patersburg. Hope you're enjoying our live coverage here on Eurosport of this Tour of Flanders 91st edition. Remember, as of tomorrow, for the next week, Tour of the Basque Country. Live every day on Eurosport. And uh, more struggles at the back here for... Uh, is that under his... Who's that uh, at the back? It's Bert Grapsch. Oh, dear. <laughs> Give it a little push. Of course, uh, you're not supposed to be doing that these days, but uh, I don't think uh, anybody really uh, worries in these sort of situations. I came out to the Tour of Flanders a, a couple of years ago to... Uh, I think David Duffield was doing the commentary on that occasion, and just to uh, take some shots, we were doing a profile of uh, Bradley Wiggins at the time, I seem to remember, and was doing some filming. 
and uh, trying to get onto one of these bergs uh, if you hadn't been there from seven o'clock in the morning onwards was absolutely impossible or in their tires but yeah you, you have them that bit softer than you would have in a normal race over tam academy roads because to take that you know that that the extra vibration out of coming through the bike you have to have them a bit softer but you also you always have to calculate the weight of the rider that's on the bike well i had a bit of a squeeze of matt white's tires this morning outside the discovery bus and they're much much softer than you would expect normally uh, the bike had been prepped ready to go the mechanic had just fin with it, finished with it and uh, the uh, the whole that bunch as much as possible four minutes still the gap uh, to these breakaway just look at the crowds you'll see more and more Flandrian flags as you at the front and uh, Arnold Coyo persisting how much has he got at the moment Twelve and a half seconds not a lot <laughs> is well, the answer to that yes well the effort here he's going to have to make to ride off the front of the bunch you know uh, you're going to certainly pay for that because you're going to have to make a huge effort uh, up front of course to break away the riders I, I you know I reckon they're not giving a hundred percent at all they're just hanging out there and uh, I think you know they will be thinking well at least we're up here and when the final shake up uh, come hopefully that you know we're still out there in front and then they can latch on to the group that come up and if it's not a really big group maybe they can just you know cling on to it for for quite a while and maybe get into the uh, into the final Bettini on the front now with uh, Bonin just behind him on the uh, this is the Tienberg and uh, this is a badly badly surfaced climb it's uh, the cobbles are all over the shop on this one and it's quite a, a steep climb as well uh, 15 well nearly 16 percent and Coyo being swallowed up by uh, Paolo Bottini just pulling things along on the front at the moment uh, Cookie still in there as well but he's going well is Bettini isn't he looking good but he's got uh, Bonin behind him well is he riding for Tom Bonin after all or is uh, Bonin just having to stick in there with him that's the big question well I think it's the more moment uh, it's you know he's in very poor shape because he's a rider who we should definitely see getting into the last you know 30 k's of the race and then you know if if he hasn't got in the real in the real final when it really gets hot and heavy uh, okay but at this moment uh, it's a very poor performance if he's starting to lose contact yeah losing contact is not what he wants to do here he's got a long way to go still still uh, 65 kilometers to go and that's the, uh, the big problem for him And we can see here gaps starting to appear. 35 riders up there in the front in a small gap. Another 12-15 uh, riders, you know, making uh, just coming back into the into the main uh, bunch and. Yeah. Do start appearing on the climbs. 
Just a little bit of news coming across now. There is, uh, in addition to this Tour of Flanders men's race that we're bringing you live here on Eurosport, there is a women's race as well. And for those of you watching in the UK, good news. Women's event ahead of uh, Sabarova, and then Marianne Voss, Chixi Warwick, and Karen Turig. So Britain's Nicole Cook extending a lead in the World Cup. That's a hard old race to win, and Nicole showing he's a, she's a real master of all surfaces. We'll, of course, bring you confirmation of the women's race as soon as we get uh, some more information. But at the moment, back to the men's race, Johan von Sumeren on the front, just piling along with uh, Kevin Holtzmans of Quickstep. And the surprising, uh, surprising that Hulsman is the one who went in the attack. Yeah, I was just wondering what the uh, the game plan is there. Yes, it's a uh, it's a tactic. I'm just wondering. Enormously to the walk then if you're out in front. Of course, that may well be the case with Van Sommelen as well if uh, Hosta feels up to uh, going across the gap. Oh, another crash. Oh, there dear. <laughs> Running into the uh, the end of the road. Uh, two liquid gas riders involved in that and uh, easily back on, but uh, not what you want to see. Oh, dear. People having to go around the outside of them. section and now they have you know uh, went off the main road quite early after Brackel and uh, went on the, on the narrow road so that is uh, certainly going to you know make it more difficult and uh, it is uh, you know it is a difficult run there because there's you know a little bit of up and down on it um, so I think uh, he's you know they're sending firing riders up the road all the time and the same for quick steps Stegman's once again here in the wheel of Cancellara Cancellara and Stegmans, two riders uh, chasing them down. Stein de Volder, I think, is one of them. And uh, as we said earlier, if you want a man who, which is uh, very short, but has been launch pad in the past for riders. And this uh, group really beginning to, to wind it up. They've caught the remains of the breakaway group. Uh, Cancelara goes straight to the front, and uh, will anybody have the strength to go with them? Uh, Chilingi's going to have a go, and I wouldn't be surprised, and I wouldn't be surprised if Franzoi has a go as well. There goes Chilingi. Never say die, Chilingi. Uh, it's Krasinski. There's Franzoi. They're all trying to hang on in there, but uh, very... It's possible he's a rider that wants you know, to do his own thing, ride his own race, and uh, for that reason he's staying longer in the Continental uh, teams. Stein de Volder and uh, Wim van Sevenant trying to come across to this group and it's uh, if there's you know if there's no reaction out of the bunch but as we see here um you know um, benati actually uh, setting the pace on the front here so uh, the liquid gas or the sorry the uh, lamprey riders uh, starting to ride or is that Baldato? that's Baldato Baldato on the front yes. which is bizarre because benati's in the breakaway up the road so they have some uh, other plan for on the world time trial champion he's still up there towards the front and devolda and Van Sevenant waiting now for the peloton to come up and try and get it together. So, missed the train. Missed the Sevens. train, yep. Hoster, of course, we thought it got in the break earlier. Not in there. 
So Predictor Lotto trying to get a couple of guys on the front now and help Lamprey to bring it back. Leif Hoster wanting to uh, put himself in some sort of position. It's getting a bit late in the day. Point has become really, really nervous here in the uh, Tour of Flanders, uh, Sean. It's been, we saw a lot of nerves early on, but uh, it must be within the last sort 15, 20k, they must get very nervous indeed. Well, definitely get to an average point as you come to the Muir. That's a very important one. We get to the Muir because riding on your own, almost on your own out front here, it's you know it saps the energy at this time as well. So you know he's not going to be that fresh and he's not going to really charge up the Muir either. I think is you know it's going to be just just fight fight your way up the Muir as best you can and. Uh, uh, the surface on the moor, as you said, it's much better than it was a number of years ago. It's that much bit easier now. But uh, you know, at this stage of the race with the corners, um, it's you know, it's uh, a really, uh, a, a really important one, and it really hits you hard. And uh, of course, the Bilsberg, you know, that straight road, uh, that can be really killer. It just continues on, and uh, it just tells you that the riders are really taking big risk, and everybody is pushing to the limit to to, to fight their way up to the front. It's almost over for this uh, Cancellara-led break now because the peloton is right behind them, as you can see, running in towards the fish over the railway bridge. The uh, peloton going to uh, swallow them up. We're now in Geraldsbergen. And only a couple of K left to get to uh, the Moor. Well, less than that, in fact. Lots of time to recover, but here for Cancellara, Stigman is just not possible because caught at the real wrong moment. Leon van Bon was the rider from Rabobank going across the front. This is Tom Bonin. He's come straight to the front. Who has he got in his wheel? Benati. Looks like Daniele Bonatti. Uh, Bonatti very strong, obviously. Uh, Bonin gritting his teeth. Bonatti looking fairly comfortable at the moment uh, and taking the lead straight away. Coming across uh, to the back of them is a uh, lotto rider. It's so difficult to tell who they are. They're all in one big line. You can't even see back because they're all just sheltering behind each uh, rider in front. Bonin really driving the pace along now, looking over his shoulder to see who's there. And still pretty much... Uh, a long string here. There's a number of riders still in contention, Sean, at the moment. They're not that far back on Tom Bonin. No, surprisingly. Certainly, certainly not, and uh, a lot of riders here in the group. Mm. You know, I, I'd say we have 60 riders, certainly, in this group. Depending on what happened up front, if uh, if the riders of uh, Bonin and company can get away and start riding out front, but if it all stays together in the line, uh, well, then we could see a lot of riders coming back again if there's no real action. As Balan comes to the front now, Bonatti beginning to suffer now. Uh, is that Hoster going through? Bogart going through. Nick Noyens coming to the front. Now Bonin, Hosta, Balan has gone away as far as he can and Bonin looks in trouble to me. Bonin looks like he's suffering and Balan is giving it as much as he possibly can. Bonin does not look happy at all. Bogut trying to stay on his wheel at the moment. Uh, just behind, I think, is Noyens on the right-hand side. Benati... <laughs>
Oh, there's uh, about a half a dozen riders. Balan's launched an attack. I'm not sure he's got enough at the moment, Sean Asteri. Angle good. <laughs> hard because there's another oh 16k to go yes well certainly he's got to ride but uh, it depends on what happened in the group of bone and of course we see bettini was quite close there and uh, you know that's very important for bone and if bettini can you know start riding and close down this one but uh bone and see with Balan, well then, you know, if the two work well together, uh, it would be difficult for them, but certainly I think Tom Bowen is suffering big time on the mirror. He suddenly, he went for it at the front and then he suddenly exploded as yes. they came up the cobbled section. His legs just went and went uh, born and went very early actually because mm. on the earlier slopes it's not the place to go unless you're feeling very very strong and you know you know you can really put on the pressure and you know keep it on to the top but uh, born and certainly suffered in the last bit of the climb they are suffered big time and you know when we see uh, uh, balan uh, you know just putting in that effort uh, there was no way born was able to follow the wheel Man who lost out last year in a sp you answer. You answer. You Ja, kan je raar af. Daar is. Now, with Alessandro Balan on his wheel, and Hosta doing uh, the majority of the work at the moment as he's come across. Uh, the Discovery riders trying to get across. It's still not a big gap. They're trying very, very hard to drag this back together and get a bigger group. Seven seconds or so is the gap at the moment. And a group of about 12 riders uh, here in the group of the Discovery rider. We see Bettini is there. Um, six seconds for the uh, two out front. Six seconds, not very much. 21 seconds, a bit more handy gap uh, over the peloton. I'm wondering whether just uh, Bettini will allow himself to be dragged back up if the others are, are uh, capable of doing this. Bo Bonan obviously suffering on the... Uh, on the climb of the Muir. And uh, still the Bosberg to go. Not such a, a vicious climb, but uh, Bettini will have seen that. And Bettini has uh, hints very. A Beckham-like rider, if you know what I mean. He likes the lifestyle, he likes his cars, he likes his expensive watches, he likes his partying and so on, but it doesn't make him any less of a rider. And they let him go uh, to Liquigas, and they already had Bone and Bettini, and they, they uh, decided to stick with those. And now Posato is blossoming into a superb rider. He always was, but uh, he was a little scatty, apparently, but difficult to control, diff difficult to direct. But it certainly hasn't stopped him improving as a rider, Sean, has it? He's coming up to these two, hopefully, and uh, it's the gap's going down 19 seconds. Will it go down anymore? I think it probably will in a second. Balan driving it along at the front, and Posato trying to get across to that gap, and that'll be... <laughs> Everybody is uh, at uh, the point we're in the race, uh, suffering big time, and uh, you know Posato has to get over the top of this, uh, you know, uh, 10 seconds, and he's not going to do that as we see. You know the riders are coming by him, and uh, he's really suffering big time with the climb, not able to keep it going out there, chasing the two up break. 
This looks like Nick Noyan's giving it a, an attack on the front. Uh, the winner of Head Volk two years ago. Pushing up this last climb of the day, the Bosberg, 11% maximum gradient. It's a long one, it's nearly a kilometer. Over the top they go. Oh, it's Staff Schierlings, I'm sorry. Well, the Belgian, uh, that's a surprise. Bettini pulling away from uh, those behind him. And now launching his effort. Shearlinks then uh, giving it a go from inside of the uh, group, chasing group. These two still ahead, though. Alessandro Bellan. <laughs> 18 seconds it is. Maybe uh, Staff Shearlinks uh, working for... Uh, Bjorn Leukemans is in there as well. Well, that's interesting. Leukemans has a colleague in Leif Foster up the road. Uh, Staff Schillings, I would guess, is trying to drag the gap back and uh, propel Nick Noyens forward uh, if they can all make contact with uh, these two here. They're working well together, though. There'll start to be some discussions between these two as to who wants to do what, but Balan uh, on the front at the moment. Hey, come on. the year uh, Le Foster who's moved to, to predict a lotto has gone back that way remember he was a lotto rider then he went to discovery and uh, has now gone back to lotto again Shearlinks and Leukemans uh, giving up the chase there as the group comes back together they're gonna have to work very hard though uh, there didn't seem to be much emphasis in keeping that chase going at the moment. Somebody else is going to have to come out and do something. Is that Stewie O'Grady? Let's have a look. No. Nope. 20 seconds now, the gap is looking far more... Uh, far more settled for the guys at the, at the front at the moment. Uh, Balan is in absolutely fine form because he won overall in Depana, remember? So he's absolutely flying. Last year got so, so close in so many, uh, so many different uh, events. Third in the Torino Adriatica, remember? He did win that Liguelia, of course. And second in Haraldbeck. So he was really sort of beginning to peak at this time again last year. He targets this race. And the chase is still going on behind. CSC and Discovery trying to drag things back together. Is that uh, Kroon again? Yes, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like Carsten. Uh, it's a small gap, and uh, when you realize the group is behind, there's quite a number of riders there about. There must be 15, 18 riders in that group behind. That is a concern for those two out front that, you know, somebody will start riding in the end. If there's a team there with two riders, one of the riders might just sac the sacrifice herself in the last number of Ks and really just give it everything for somebody uh, in the team who've got a bit of a sprint. There they are, then Vikus and Kroon trying to bridge that gap at the moment. Kroon doing most of the work. Uh, 17 seconds to those riders. Right at the back of this little group now, Christian Moreni. Well, they won't want to bring him to the line. He's got quite a, a fierce sprint. Bonin in this group as well. 17 seconds. Well, I wonder what's going through his mind and now. There is Nick Noyens, his former teammate. And he's got at the moment. And it was Alessandro Milan who launched the attack on the Moor. Uh, coming out from behind Tom Bonin, who'd gone to the front to try and dictate the pace. And suddenly his legs folded underneath him. Uh, about a halfway up the climb, the climb, the steepest part of the climb, as Balan attacked, he couldn't respond. Not only could he not respond, but the legs just went. Carsten Kroon. And Weitkus, well, they've closed the gap a little bit. It's now 13 seconds with four kilometers to go. Maybe it isn't over yet. Who knows? Filippo Pizzato tried to get away and uh, was dragged back. Unless somebody starts to get across now and work, I think it's just too late. 
Well, it looks like the gap might have come uh, down another bit. Uh, I think we have uh, our two leaders out front might have lost uh, a number of seconds. It's difficult to see with our, sh uh, you know, with our shots here on the on the big straight road. But uh, uh, I think uh, you know the two leaders are coming back to uh, the two chases are definitely closing down on our two leaders and also uh, the group of Bolden and Bettini, Posato. They are coming back also. So it's going to well. Here they go. One kilometer to go. Now they're going to start playing the cat and mouse game. Have they got enough time? to do this or are they going to be caught napping Balan in the lead out position with Hosta right behind him Hosta looking a little relaxed at them just trying to be relaxed and get going in the moment keep himself together focus focus Balan not wanting to lead him all the way to the line but he's not wanting to slow down either he knows how close they're coming behind Vikas and Kroon are pulling that gap back and Balan is actually keeping a Big place to be. Well, they swing hard right in a minute into the finishing straight. The crowd is enormous here. They have a big screen, they all know what's going on. Here they go. Balan still keeping it rolling, looking over his shoulder to see where Horst is coming. They, they're clever enough to know that they can't slow down anymore. Oh, it's just he's just dropping the pace a weeny weeny bit. Balan. Not enough to be caught, but here they go, look, they're just behind. I think there's a whole group of riders coming up. I think it's Gusev on the far left-hand side. Now they're going for the sprint. Leif Foster's gone on the front. Leif Foster leading it out as Balan got the acceleration to come past him. I don't think he has. I think Leif Foster's going to take this, or is he? Balan coming back at him. Balan takes it. Alessandro Balan, the victor of the Tour of Flanders 2007. He takes it back from Leif Hoster, who hit the front, and it looked for a minute as though Hoster had the legs on him, but Balan, calm and collected, came around him. Terrific win. Balan breaks through to the big time. Finally, he's tried for the last two years to win here. This is his third attempt at really going for it, and I'm so pleased for him. He takes the big one. Well, we said it might be a day to favour some Italians. And Alessandro Balan has made the very, very best use of the weather, his skill, his courage, and his natural talent. And now enters the record books. And the chance to join the three-time winners club. Bonin, whose legs just folded from underneath him when this man launched an attack halfway up the uh, mirror of Gerardsbergen. Winner, there you are, winner of uh, meters on the top of the mule. So I'm surprised to see him you know, going the attack that early. Well, just uh, Balan saying, uh, I'm, I'm still uh, struggling to believe this is true. <laughs> I tried to play the uh, race fairly conservatively till, uh, till we got to the moor. And then I gave it everything and tried to, to give everything towards the end. But this race is incredibly important to me and I'm very happy. Uh, the question is just asking about Hosta starting the sprint. Yeah, he led me going into the last... Uh, uh, 500 meters and I saw that they were controlling a little bit so I slowed down a weeny bit and uh, then Hosta went and uh, I managed to pass it but I really struggled.